even try it. Go get the Mary Tyler Moore and run it on your big screen TV and see that big face coming after you. Hello, everybody. Oh, we're on. This is the American Cinema. Understanding movies, the American Cinema. Uh, the, as you know, this, this past couple of days, summer is over. And uh, fall term begins, and so here we are to take a look to see what is going on in understanding movies. So I'm going to go through it, so let's get started, and I'll tell you what to expect. First of all, who I am. <laughs> okay, My name is Lucanio. You can find me in Building 17, that's the, the Forum Building, uh, Room 210. That's my number. Don't call me. I'll tell you why. Uh, and there's my email address. My office hours for this quarter, Tuesday, 9.30 to 10.30, so I'll be there tomorrow. And by appointment, if you cannot make that time. Who am I? Well, uh, I've studied film all of my life. I've been, in my career has been involved with motion picture work, mostly with education. I've written several books on film. I have specialized in 1950 science fiction movies like Plan 9 from Outer Space. And um, so I was also a talking head in a, a movie that was made a few years ago called Monsters from the Id. I didn't look today, but I think that website is still there. Um, haven't heard too much about the movie lately. Uh, back several years ago, it was a big hit in Norway, uh, and that's as far as I know <laughs> where it succeeded. Uh, I don't know what about the Norwegians liked it, but it was very successful. Um, the latest, latest things I've worked on, I wrote, actually it's, it, I've been uh, kind of concentrating on TV a little bit, the Science Fiction Theater was a book that came out uh, two years ago, and I wrote uh, the chapter on the Frederick Ziv Company, which was television syndication, what that was all about, the Ziv Company. And last year, last fall, this Rocket Man book came out, and I co-authored uh, an essay about uh, children watching science fiction movies or television programs in the 1950s who joined the clubs like the Secret Squadron and the Rocket Rangers and those kinds of things in which a lot, which was seen in that movie, Monsters from the Id, but a lot of our NASA people were members of those organizations and as a result of that, they went on to conquer space. I am also involved with old time radio. It is one of my favorite pastimes and I'm the editor of a magazine called Radiogram, uh, which covers uh, the old time radio stuff, like The Shadow, The Lone Ranger, and this sort of thing. And because of that, I also work locally with Radio Redux. So if you ever, if you really want to see what, it's, what a radio show was like in telling a story strictly, strictly in an, through sound, you can see what Radio Redux, because they are, they are a fantastic group. And that's our show that starts in a couple of weeks. The, it's a Sam Spade one. And uh, so anyway, that is something to see. As it says there, we're radio worth watching. What you do in a radio station to create wonderful stories, all done just by hearing what hearing dialogue, yes, yes, but what sound effects do, and that, by the way, is what made American radio far and above European radio. The, the it, British radio, they didn't care about sound effects. The only sound effects they would have is somebody open a door and close the door. But we tried in the American radio, they tried very much to create this, this image for what? The mind. Anyway, that's enough of that plug. We move on. I told you not to call me. Okay, that's a good thing. Don't call me. I have two email addresses for you. That's the best way to get in touch with me because I'm only on campus one day a week. And what happens is that wonderful playing tag. You call me Tuesday at 1030 and I'm gone and I get it the next Tuesday because I don't check them because I don't talk to anybody on the phone anyway. So anyway, email me. Two uh, email addresses. They're in your syllabus. And I check both of them throughout the day. I check them very frequently so I would uh, be able to contact you 
as quickly as I can that way. So the best way to get in touch with me is email. All right, moving on. You will use email. You will use email. You will use email. Thank you. The book. Okay. There are four editions of the book. Last time I checked. You don't need the latest edition. Any edition of that book works. And there's a reason for that. The book was written to accompany those film series. That film series that you are watching were programs that were shown on PBS many, many, many years ago. And this book accompany, accompanied that presentation. So the first edition of the book is up to date with regard to what's in the videos. But we never stop looking at movies. So later editions maintain all the information that is crucial to those videos, but they just add newer movies and talk about the same basic principles and tenets and so forth that you find in the movie series, the video series, and apply them to newer films. I don't test you as such over the newer films. I test you over the films that are discussed in the video series. So, you know, Citizen Kane, everybody who, anybody who wants to talk about movies, anybody that's going to consider themselves an expert or at least somebody that knows movies has to be able to talk about Citizen Kane. You cannot say, well, I'm a movie scholar. Have you seen Citizen Kane? Nope, never. All right, don't talk to him anymore. Stop the conversation, move on to something else, okay? So anyway, it stops, you know, you're just going to deal with those, with, with the movies that they talk about, which have stood the test of time and remain a very, very valuable uh, piece of our uh, culture, our American culture. And moving on, what is this course all about? This is an introductory course that brings Hollywood filmmaking into clear focus as an art form. Now, you default to that. That's the reason you're here. That's the reason you're in college. That's the reason why you walk down the street and somebody says, hey, what's movies are all about? You say, well, movies, they are an art form, okay? Whereas someone else will say, if you're not in college, they might say, what are movies? Hey, movies are fun. I like movies, lots of action. Okay, but no, 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 no. If you're in college, you adopt the college persona and say that it is an art form and never mention the naughty part of the other part of it. It's an economic force. <laughs> and this is what I have told every film class, and I'm saying it again, I say every film class I've ever taught, ever taught, I say the same thing, you have to understand this. It is called a motion picture industry. As a matter of fact, it gets all kinds of tax breaks that you can't get because they make a lot of money and they fill the pockets of politicians. But what it's all about, it's an economic force. It's a business first. A movie is made in order to make money. No other reason. And it is to make big money. Does that mean that it's not an art form? No, 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 no. The byproduct is it's an art form because we see beautiful things in films. Not all movies, but lots of films give us beautiful things. We see that as an aesthetic piece of our culture. And we'll look at it and we'll go, wow. And you know what makes it a valuable piece of, of our aesthetic culture is when we can talk about it and never run out of things to say. And that's what makes Citizen Kane so powerful. We still talk about that movie. And we still find something new in it. We're still excited about how it was made and what it says to us. So yes, it's made to make money. It's produced to make money. But also, it comes out being something that is made like any other art form. It is something that is made by human hands. And it speaks to us. Uh, you know, Citizen Kane, considered, you know, the greatest movie of all time, blah, blah, blah. 
lost its shirt when it was produced. Nobody went to see it. It was a bomb. <laughs> but it was made because of one person who had made an impact on American culture through a medium that I was just talking about. And we all know it all at once. That person was, all at once, that's right, Orson Welles. <laughs> okay, and he made a name for himself. How? In the radio. On radio, right, and doing something that he did, you know, in 1938 in October by scaring the pants off the nation, you know, with his War of the Worlds broadcast. He was very famous, or infamous, and Hollywood said, hey, come on over. <laughs> Maybe you can make a movie for us. And, uh, and he did, you know, he made Citizen Kane, and which today, of course, we see as a fantastic movie. But back then it was like, what kind of movie is this? Is it a biography or is it a film noir? Is it a, what kind of movie is this? And it's entirely different from anything that had been made up to that point. And it's also a system of representation and communication. Movies communicate to us. Communicate unbelievably uh, in such a way, you know, that we, we imitate movies. The old saying goes that when Clark Gable took his shirt off, and it happened one night, the sale of undershirts skyrocketed. <laughs> Those kinds of things that occur in movies, how we just sort of follow through and say, well, I want to be just like this guy or that guy or her or him, or, you know, everybody wants to be Lady Gaga, you know, that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, moving on. The American cinema probes the deeper meanings of American movies with the hidden message of genres. That's their term. I don't like it. I don't think they're hidden messages. I just think they're messages that you find in there, and you don't have to look that deeply to find them. But you'll find these messages about who we are, and, we, and usually in, the, in genre. What defines American cinema, and even, you know, worldwide it defined American cinema is a genre, you know, a type of movie, and that is the Western. The Western was appreciated throughout the world, and even got to the point of, not parody in the sense of, of uh, uh, ridicule, but, uh, you know, when, when Sergio Leone began to make those spaghetti westerns, he was taking what he had seen in his childhood of what American westerns were like, and he put his spin on them, perhaps an Italian spin, which was very much an Italian spin. It was, his films, you know, the Clint Eastwood movies, were operatic. <laughs> They were very operatic, had that kind of, uh, of influence. Uh, also, the social and psychological effects of style. That's a little deeper. I can't, I, I'll run out of time if I really start talking about the, the effects of style. But, but the style, what does, for instance, for you filmmakers out there, and you people are aware of this, I'm sure, what does a long take do for the film that a montage sequence doesn't do. It slows things down. Yeah. Gives you time to see what's going on, take everything in. All right, the answer, the answer that we're getting here is that we're, it, it takes more time for us to, to get the image, you know, uh, to, to look at it. And that's part of it. That's what Hitchcock always said. Remember Hitchcock's, he always said film is nothing more than a, a peeping Tom's delight. <laughs> but what he meant by that is it's voyeuristic. We see things that we normally don't see. But in, some, in many cases, the long take, you sit back and you just stare, you look at it. And it's not manipulating you as much as if a montage sequence would come and would, would flash the images. So anyway, they look at the psychological effects of style. And the last one is the mutual influence of society and popular culture. Part of that, that last section there, part of that is, does the movie influence our culture or does the culture influence our movie? And we trace that back, of course, to in recent times. Violent movies cause you to go out and commit violence? Or do violent movies just reflect the violence in our own culture? 
The answer is an easy one. The answer is yes. It works both ways. <laughs> it works both ways. Sure, we make movies that reflect what goes on in our own culture. But at the same time, our movies also, they do have an impact upon our own culture. If the movies speak of our culture, what would they say about us? If you, dis if you just landed from Mars and all you had to see are a bunch of movies about what our culture was like, what would they tell you? What would they tell the Martian? Where are the movies from? Well, yeah, well, the question here was, when were the movies from? All right, let's just say the last five years. What would they tell us? <laughs> yeah, I got I got a lot of answers here, folks. But it, yeah, you're all right. If one one answer was they'd scare them, they'd go back to Mars, uh, <laughs> perhaps. But it what does it say about us? That's that's what we're dealing with there, and our film series does talk about that. What does it say? Yeah, we move on. Okay, what does it work? Schedule each week. You know, you're gonna it's gonna be a 60 minute lesson. The movies are an hour long. They're gonna be broadcast on the cable system five times, but also I mentioned earlier that you can see them at the Annenberg site. So you're not just limited to television here. You're just not limited to the Comcast to watch the, these films. You can watch them anytime you wish uh, online at the Annenberg site. It's in your syllabus. And this is what we do throughout the course. The first, next time I talk to you will be on October 28th at the end of the month. Um, by the end of next month, <laughs> uh, in about a month. And I will be in here and I will give you a review about what will be on the midterm exam. The next thing you do is you'll take the midterm exam. It's uh, uh, one week only. You'll take it, it's available in the testing lab for one week. So you can uh, take it when you have the time to get in to take the exam. Then the next time I see you will be on December 2nd. And I'll be in this room and I will give you a review of uh, material for the final exam. And then of course the final exam is one week as well. It runs December 5th through December 12th. You have to check the testing lab for the availability of their hours. In other words, when are they open? And I'll talk more about that. So what do we do? Well. Course requirements are, number one, watch the video programs. All right, that's, that's your lecture. You're not gonna listen to me. You're lucky, you don't get to hear me. What you get to do is watch these videos which are like documentaries. So it's like watching, what is interesting is, if we had a class in documentary filmmaking or documentaries, we could take all of these movies and look at them and say, how well are these made as documentaries? Okay, and the nice thing about these films is they're made by the motion picture industry, which means you get to see tons of images from great films. If some independent person tried to do this, it'd cost them a million, a million, that means nothing in the movie. It would cost them bazillions to get the rights to show you those film clips. But here, the movie industry made it, and they said, yeah, you wanna see all this stuff? Here it is. And then as I remind you, there it is, broadband connection only, you know, that's the site. You don't, don't worry about writing that down. It's on the syllabus. You'll be able to get to the Annenberg site and you'll be able to um, see it at your leisure whenever you wish. So you watch the video programs, you read the appropriate sections of the text, again, it doesn't matter which edition. The text remains pure to what's in the video series. If you have, I, I put in your syllabus, uh, I, I gave you the chapters uh, that accompany each uh, video. And um, uh, if, if there's some discrepancies in, it, in the text, I don't have the, a copy of the third edition, but I looked at the second and I looked at the fourth editions. And they're, they're essentially the same. They're just different page numbers because they've enlarged the section with, with newer films. So, but the one way to guarantee that if you've got an old edition is to look at it. And if they're talking about the studio system, find the chapter that talks about the studio system, okay? 
Now, uh, take notes. I mean, I, maybe you're a genius and you don't have to. Maybe you know everything already. Maybe you're a savant and you know everything there is to know about movies, so you don't have to take notes. But that's essentially, you know, take notes on things that you don't understand. If you're a movie nut and you know a lot of this stuff, you're like, well, why bother to take notes? I know that stuff. But then along comes something and they might say something in there. You go, what are they talking about? Well, I'll go back and take notes so you'll have that. And why? Because you're going to take a test. You're going to take a midterm, and you're going to take a final exam. And when I give you those tests, you'll want to be able to answer them, the questions the right way, so that you, ought, that, that you can walk out of this with a smile on your face and go, yeah, I passed the film class. And how do you do that? Oh, let me tell you. It, they're all, it's, it's 50 questions, each one. Each of the midterms, 50 questions. The, the finals, 50 questions. Uh, they all deal with stuff at that time. The, the, the final doesn't go all the way back to the beginning. It takes over from where we left off. And um, they're all, you know, multiple guess type questions. Um, it's done in the social science testing lab. That's center four, five, six. Uh, you do have to have photo ID required. But you also can take with you a three by five note card. Now that's all they allow. If I were giving you the test, I'd allow you to bring the book. And I'd allow you to bring all your notes. But the testing lab doesn't do it that way because they can't monitor everybody. And there's so many people that cheat anyway. So they just can't do it. So they limit you to one three by five card. Front and back works, okay. <laughs> You're going to add stuff. Just put down the stuff that you're confused about. Stuff you know, you don't have to worry about it. And always check down there to verify when it's open. Because too often what happens, uh, and, I, and I know I don't want to cast aspersions on all you wonderful people that are here tonight, nor do I want to cast aspersions on people that are out there watching me at wherever you are. But there are many students who are absolute, total idiots. And these are students who will go to the testing lab at five minutes to five when they close at five and say, I want to take that test. At which point they say, sorry, it's closed. And then they call me and scream at me because they didn't have a chance to take the test. I don't want to talk to you. If I see you on the street, I'll cross the street. <laughs> OK? And you laugh, and you're looking at me like, oh, come now. And I'm going to tell you that's happened to me more than once while teaching this class. I don't want you to be somebody like that. And you're not, because I can see all the intelligent faces out there. You're not, because I know you will go there in plenty of time to take the test. But you have to be aware of when they're open. And they do have some interesting hours. Now, I, I, I know in the past, because of so many students here, that uh, they have uh, Saturday hours. So that's always the best time to go, because nobody would ever give up a Saturday to take a test. Except you smart, intelligent students I see out there. You guys would do that. So thank you. All right. We move on. Again, the test. Uh, the note card. One three by five note card for reference. That's all. And it like like the little example there, if you can't, you know, I can't remember aspect ratio. I don't know what cinemascope. It's 2.351, 2.35 to 1 ratio, you know, on the screen and all of that. I, I just can't remember that. Well, then that's what you write down on your notes. That's what you write down. Because then you'll say, when I ask you the question, what is the aspect ratio of cinemascope? Aha, you whip out the card, you got it. Okay. You are responsible for the exam, not me. Blah, 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 blah. What do we do? I, oh, yes, at the time, at the time of the test, about the time I give you the review, I will post on Moodle, Moodle, and I don't get along, but it is put up on Moodle, that you will be able to download a study guide, and it will have information about the exam so that you can go through that and you will say, I know that, 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 I know everything, it's done, I'm happy, I can celebrate. Or you go through it and you go, I know that, but I don't know anything else, I'm in trouble. All right, so, 
Extra credit. This is very quickly. I talk about this later on, but this is just for those people who want to show off their knowledge. But it also is an insurance policy in case you screw up on an exam. You have two options here. You can write a paper on the production elements of a single sequence of any film produced before 1970. Yeah, I know. I make you actually look at a movie that you have not seen. And don't look at me that way, because I could make it even worse. I could make it a black and white movie. <laughs> All right? So anyway, or make your own movie, and it's all outlined as, next slide says, it's in the deluxe syllabus that is available for you online to download, and it gives you all the details about it. If you're confused, bewildered, rattled, depressed, desperate, so am I, okay? <laughs> but if you wish to, stop by during office hours or send me an email. The program schedule works this way. The first thing you're gonna look at is classic Hollywood style. All right, that's more than just an old movie, that classic business has a meaning to it. Then you look at the studio system, how it began this studio factory that produced people, the star, and how the stars began to influence the production of films. Then you go into genre and you'll look at the Western. Then you'll look at the romantic comedy. Then you look at the combat film that everybody else in town calls the war movie. And then you'll look at everybody's favorite, film noir, and wonder if it's a style or if it's actually a genre. And then you move into film in the television age, what happened in the 1950s that changed Hollywood, changed films. Then we look at the film school generation. That is where you go to school to learn how to make movies. Before that, they just made movies. Then along comes the eggheads, and then they got to tell you how to make movies, okay? And then the edge of Hollywood. Now, this, this movie series is at the edge of Hollywood because they're about 20 years old, these videos. And they're just down, they're talking about all oh, these strange things like uh, home video, all these strange things about movies on the Internet, you know, all these strange, you know, they're just talking about that. Okay, that's it. There are the two email. That's the best way to get in touch with me, one way or the other. That's how you get in touch with me. And just remember, you're responsible for the exam and check all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. The end. I made it. We have about two minutes. Questions for the good of the order. Maybe one minute. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, my other class overlapped. Do you mind just doing a quick brief of how this class works? <laughs> <laughs> I know you can't go through the whole thing again. Right afterwards. Right I, on, I, thank yeah, you. Yeah, the, the, the question was, well, never mind. It was, we can worry about that later. Uh, any other questions for the good of the order? You know, like, what do we have to do? Why do we have to do it? I don't want to do it. I'm leaving. <laughs> yes, sir. Are these the days of the reviews and stuff in this syllabus also where we have to be up here? Yes, yes. The okay. days, the, okay, the, 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 the question is, are all the days and things in the syllabus? They are. They're right up there in the front page. I know it's small print, but I'm cheap. I printed those myself. <laughs> Okay, yes. Will there be a conversation starter on Moodle for us? No. I don't. The question was, what about Moodle, essentially? And my answer is, I hate Moodle. I don't do anything with Moodle but post stuff. So you don't have to worry about Moodle. Moodle and I do not get along. We hate each other's guts. We're like a violent movie. So now, you brought up Moodle. No, I am losing control. Um, any other questions? Yes, sir. The, re the question is, how do we get the, re the review sheets? Uh, I, they will be posted on Moodle. I post the materials on Moodle, but I don't do conversations and all that. Okay. All right. Well, the music's playing, so we're done. It's time to go. Bye. See you. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs>